Hmm. Really relaxed now after I finish off a project. And I'm kind of thinking like, I'm lacking direction. What am I supposed to do? Is there anyone that could give me some guidance right now? The heck was that? What the? I didn't know this thing could give me fortunes. It only told me that I had a sexy hat. But how am I supposed to do that if I can't read minds? This thing is actually more heavy than you think. And despite your judgment and probably your urge to try to get me locked up in a padded cell with a straitjacket, I had a really good reason for using the sledgehammer. It was an old ceramic floor that was beat to shit that was uh, in need of a renovation. And apparently using a sledgehammer was the best way to get all the old tile mashed up and removed. Obviously you're not going to swing it with all your might because you're going to damage your floor at the same time and have to replace the subfloor too. But it was a pretty fun thing, like, after one week it was nice to finally get that done. And after all that work, finished off today, I think I need to fuel up a little bit before I get to the main part of the vlog. So, time to get me fuel. Alright, almost gonna be good to go. I've got my glass, and I decided to go a little bit uh, old man style tonight. Mostly because I feel like I kind of deserve it. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I kind of enjoyed the Carling Black Label nowadays. It's not one I would have thought about years ago, but I know it was one that my dad used to drink a lot. But of course, if you're gonna be going all uh, redneck on your beer, you yeah, gotta go in economy sized beers. So, one jumble fucker coming right up. This one's like 740 milliliters. It's like the same amount that you get in a bottle of wine or even a bottle of scotch. Like I don't get some of these cheap beers you get it in such huge discounts. What's up with that? But it's all good. Just gonna enjoy this now while I get to the main menu. It... We'll be right back. 
And we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Turns out I had a piece of dust in this class. Sometimes I wonder how it gets in here. And I don't think it's like left over from my destruction. It's just like floating around inside it like it wants to invade my beer glass. Is it sentient? Is it trying to take over the world like they're pinky in the brain? Seriously, somebody get me an answer for that. I have no idea. But whatever is invading us, beware. Be very watchful and defend yourselves. I know I will. I got my sledgehammer. But cheers to you all. Ah, beautiful. For cheap beer, this has a pretty good taste. As for the menu tonight, I was actually thinking to myself, like, I've covered a lot of my signature dishes and some of my favorite stuff, and I actually was at a loss for words, like, what can I do that's kind of brand new? And I was looking for like a good meat dish, trying to think about something with a creamy sauce because I'm really into that nowadays. But then, just off the top of my head, I thought, I remember stroganoff a lot because my mom would make that too. And I had to look up like, what exactly is a stroganoff sauce? Lo and behold, I found a really good recipe for beef stroganoff. So I thought, I'm going to do that and I'll whip it up for tonight. So this should be fun. So. Let me just get a few more sips of this stuff and then we're gonna get started. Mm. Jumbo redneck fucker, gotta love them. So I'm just gonna get some of my tedious stuff out of the way before I get to the main course. I'm gonna peel up and slice my onion because I know I'm gonna need that for later on. In terms of your quantity, you're gonna need like maybe around two of small onions or medium sized onions or possibly a giant one like I have over here. This one's getting kind of soft so I want to make sure I cook it before it goes completely bad and rancid. Nobody likes rancid food. It goes to waste and it smells nasty. Get this here. Yep, it smells fine to me. Uh oh, should not have done that. The last time I did that I ended up crying. This is what happens when you sniff onions. It's game over for you. Playing that gag on me again? Go away, shoo. I swear, sometimes my editor is playing against me. So keep going with this, and then you're gonna get it all diced up, and then keep it aside for later on. Because there's gonna be some other steps too before we get to the onion. All right, so I got all my onions sliced up now, and I'm gonna keep this aside for a little bit later. And as for your type of meat you're gonna use, based on the few recipes I've seen, you would need to use something like a kind of a good steak. So something like ribeye steak or faux filet, I guess if you want. Sirloin tip, not inside round or a top side steak. That's supposed to be kind of chewy or it's going to be tough. You probably want something with a good amount of fat in there. And while the prices of the beef that I was looking for were kind of pricey, I'm trying something else with this because I think it's still the same principle. I'm getting one pound here of bottom blade roast. And it does have a good amount of fat in it, so hopefully this does the trick. Of course, this thing is pretty thick. So instructions are going to say I need to uh, mash it up or push it a little bit. So if I need to mash up some meat, well, <laughs> it's clobbering time. Ah, just kidding, everyone. I'm not going to use a sledgehammer on this. I'm not an idiot. I'm going to destroy everything. But you really just need like a rolling pin, maybe a meat left mallet or just possibly your bare hands to just push it down and kind of flatten it up before you start slicing up into smaller pieces. And of course, if you're not sure if you're gonna have enough uh, room in the package or you think it's gonna burst, you can just use some plastic wrap and just put the meat around the meat. That way you can tenderize it without infecting your hands. So keep on with that and then eventually I'm gonna get it sliced up.
discard the excess fat in here. Seems like kind of a waste if you ask me. Somebody will probably want to put this to good use, honestly. I guess we want to use it as a cooking uh, ingredients. Or, and just cook it once, not uh, more than that. Thinking back to my grandparents, that uh, we're actually pretty known for cooking uh, things in meat fat or like chicken fat, and then saving it and then reusing that same fat for cooking it another time. It's like recooked. It's like frying chicken a second time after it's already been fried. I don't know. I can't imagine myself doing that either. But I suppose if you're trying to use uh, your resources carefully, that's one way of doing it. Plus, uh, they're from uh, Ukraine, also from, like, left around sometime in the late 1940s. So I guess if you look at the context of the history back then, you kind of know why you want to hold on to your rations uh, carefully. But it's all good. I'm going to keep cutting this up until I can get them into smaller cubes for cooking, and this is actually really tricky to cut for me. Slicing knife hasn't been doing well, so my trick for meat is use a bread knife. It has enough teeth like a steak knife, and it's able to get through this actually hoping this is going to be tender because I was told that my grandmother, well, another grandmother had used a uh, blade roast in the past and it might be a bit chewy too. I mean, if it doesn't turn out well and you're going to be witness to my first failure and maybe have to struggle then, I'll just uh, chew uh, on this cow properly and maybe you growl like a dog for your own amusement. Hey, if something fails, at least I'll fail with style, right? Getting close to this, we're almost done. And it wasn't too much fat that I had to lose on this thing either. There, a little bit here. This much of just gonna junk. And there we go. One blade roast all cubed up or sliced up to make it easier to cook in there. So we're gonna keep this aside and actually get to the meat of the cooking. Ah, I saw what I did there. Now onto the actual cooking. So to get this done properly, you're gonna need one giant skillet, as usual, and oil for this. They recommended using vegetable oil in this recipe, but frankly, I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. I'm just gonna use plain old olive oil. It's a nice well-rounded oil for myself here too. So start with one tablespoon. I'm just gonna get it up to medium-high heat for now. And I've got my beef cubes over here, just kept aside until I'm ready to stew them up. And of course, to give it a little bit of flavoring, add a sprinkle of salt and pepper on here. Just enough to give it a bit of a hint of a taste as well. So then once that's done, I'm going to be throwing in half of the meat and one tablespoon of olive oil. And then once that's cooked, add another tablespoon with the other half of the meat, and then that should brown up properly. And then down the road, I'll be able to add my other ingredients. So let this heat up. I'm not putting on high, high heat though. I've learned from experience the higher the heat you put on for oil, once you put something in, that oil splashes and that oil's hot. It's gonna scald you. I wouldn't recommend it, people. I've had it happen before. Once is enough. Let's see, I think it's heating up properly here. Yeah, oil's spreading pretty well. So let's try this out. Let's try half of the beef and see how this cooks. Ah oh, yeah, nice sizzle over here, everyone. So, oops, seemed like it was a bit that I forgot to cut off. Nah, fuck it, I'm not gonna be in the mood for that. So you just wanna get it cooking quickly in here, just to make sure that it browns up properly. It's apparently gonna be a bit pink on the inside, but that's fine. Now, actually, I'm not gonna take that chance. I'm gonna cook it well through. That way, once everything else is cooked, I'll be able to make sure this is properly made. Actually, I don't really like that. So I'm taking this piece out, replacing with a few other uh, rations. Yeah, that's much better. I'm gonna take a minute to cut this up. Yeah, how can I forget that kind of stuff? Okay, I got some tongs. The idea is that you wanna just spread this around to get it all brown. Let's try to work quickly here. Yeah, look, not looking bad so far. I'm sure it's going to be tasty afterwards. Mm -hmm. There we go. This is all well ground up, so now let's get this out of the way onto a plate. And then I'm going to do the second part with the remaining meat. So let's add our next tablespoon of oil. 
and then repeat. And hopefully this one goes a bit quicker because it's been heating up for quite some time. Almost there. Just a few rations left. There we go. This is in. Time to let this cook and then let me disinfect. Get the remaining beef onto the plate with the juices intact, no less, so that you can reuse that later on. There. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is what it's going to be looking like right now. There is still some pink there, but once I get to the next step with this, it is going to cook properly. And I'm getting it to the end of my uh, jumble fucker, so I think I should move on to round two also. There we go. This is going to be the perfect intermission once I get to part two. Stick around. for a second, mostly because that was the brew that I was doing for myself right now. I've already, well actually you haven't seen it because this is part of that video that when I filmed in 4K kind of messed up on me. So I'm recycling some jokes over here. I went for a brewer called La Taloche and it's a double smash IPA from La Souche Micro Brasserie. And if you were to look at the front over here, you're looking at this, it almost makes you think of a game of punch out or maybe Rocky perhaps. Except I know that if I play the Rocky theme, I'm probably going to get copyrighted on that. But, yeah. It just made me think of this. Lil Mac. Probably, um, generic fighter? I don't know, he's not as memorable as King Hippo or, uh, Piston Hurricane. But the only downside to this is that I went from a jumble fucker with the other one to an 8% fucker. Ugh. 8% double smash IPA. So then if you're drinking this, does that mean you're going to get a TKO or you're going to get knocked out? Is that what they're trying to imply? Maybe? Huh. And let's see what this one is like. <sighs> okay. Double IPA usually means that it's going to be double hoppy, so like slightly more bitter to it. But double, triple IPAs, you're probably looking at the 8 to 9% range too, so... Exercise caution when you're drinking one of these suckers. Man. Punch out, everyone. What more can he ask for? And we're back. And now we're getting to the next step of this process. And what I'm holding here is about, I want to say, two tablespoons of butter. Unsalted butter, going by usual mantra. No, people, I'm not going to be eating this. If I was to eat a stick of butter, I would wrap it around in bacon first to make it all tasty, you know? Now this is actually going to go into the pan on medium-high heat. That way it's going to be melting and then I'll get to the next step. So, the big part about stroganoff too is one of the main ingredients that I didn't even look at or even talk about. It involves plenty of mushrooms. So I took one pack over here, 
slice them up thinly, but not too thin so it's like paper thin because you don't want it to kind of feel like it's paper. And I'll admit, it's because I saw this on sale over at the store today, thinking that, oops, let me adjust this camera. There. This looks much better. But yeah, I saw this on sale at the store and thought, hmm, mushrooms, that equals stroganoff? Let me look up stroganoff. And lo and behold, it was one of the key ingredients. Discount mushrooms, everyone. That's uh, what gave me the inspiration. And I guess if you're wondering about the price, I was just looking at it thinking, well, shit, it was 99 cents. I had to get a bit more butter here, just in case. Can't believe it, it's gonna take some oil for the beef and butter for that. Talk about a heavy load. So once this is melted, then I'll finally get around to putting the onions I sliced up earlier in the episode. And then once that's done, like after a minute, once it starts to cook up, then you can add the mushrooms until it's golden. Mm-hmm. I should probably think of what I'm gonna be serving this over too. Hmm. All right, this butter looks like it's melted as good as it's gonna get. Time to get the onions in. Mm -hmm. Then just spread it around so that it's all gonna be separated. Man, they say they use one large onion, but this seems like a lot of onion even for my taste. I'm not picky about onions these days, but man, I'm looking at some thinking, what have I got myself into? And I've used that expression a lot in my uh, old age. Hashtag old as fuck. Okay, let this cook for a good minute. And then once it's kind of golden up, then I'll get the mushrooms in. Hmm. Not bad. It's not as uh, pungent of a smell like usually with onions. It's not making me cry. I don't need someone to play a violin for me. Butter onions are actually not bad. But long story short, let's get the rest of the mushrooms in here. Uh, there we go. Now we're gonna get these mushrooms golden up in here, and once they're all set, we'll be able to take on Goombas, maybe Koopa Troopas, or hell, possibly even the Hammer Brother if you want. I mean, those guys are a pain in the ass on the best of days. Worst of days, you wanna go running in the corner and crying, right? I suppose fight fire with fire, right? I still got the sledgehammer, so take on the Hammer Brother by pretending you're a sledge brother. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad joke there. I'm feeling nostalgic because I did play Super Mario Bros. 3 for the first time in ages, and it's one of those games that it still holds up to this day. I freaking love it. And that was the first time you ever saw it, Sledge Brothers in a Mario Brothers game. So once these are golden, you can get your next ingredients in. God, that was one hell of a tangent. Okay, these are looking really well, soft, smells heavenly too. So next ingredient would be sunflower to give it a bit of thickening. You're going to need about a good two tablespoons of this stuff to spread it around and then you let it cook for a minute. Voila, this is in. And then let's get it all mixed up. Probably gonna cake together. And make sure you scrape the sides too. This will spread out evenly and let it cook. And now that this has been cooking for a good minute, time to add our next ingredient, basic beef broth. Need about a good two cups of this to mix in. So first we're gonna start with one cup. And a good suggestion is if you want to use this, use the reduced salt version of it so you don't have too much sodium in here. You want to kind of reduce that as much as possible. So you start with one, whoops, there goes my salt. Mix it in until it's all blended together, and then once it is blended, add the second one and then mix it in. Wait, hold on a minute. It's like, you put beef broth in this, but you're also putting actual beef. It's like. Beef uh, mixed with beef, cow and cow, cow munching on cow. I don't know. <coughs> Feels like it goes against the whole food chain that we learned about. Hey, you've been to school. You know what the food chain looks like. All creatures eat humans. I swear, that's got to be a mistake. <sighs> all right, mix this all in. Ooh, not bad. So, 
onions, mushrooms, flour, and some beef broth. This is supposed to be a thicker sauce, so if you're wondering what you would use to thicken it, it's actually some other basic ingredient you would have in your fridge. You need about a good one tablespoon of Dijon mustard once it's all incorporated. Just shake it in, give it a good shake, like you're in the John. And then once you've got that, then you would add the other ingredient to thicken it up. Two thirds of a cup of sour cream, apparently. Like I love sour cream when it's in the pierogi, but I never really use it as much for cooking. But I suppose it's the first time for anything, right? So just gonna get a spoon, fill up my measuring cup with until it's like two thirds. And then we'll see. Three quarters. Not bad. There's a little bit left in here. Maybe I can use that to make some garlic sauce again. And hopefully I don't start dancing again like the last time. Yeah. So once you put this in, you just give it a good stir until you give it like a very creamy, thick texture. And then that's a good sign that it's gonna be time to put the cow back into here. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna split once you cook it, but it's normal. Give it a bit of time and then it'll all integrate together. Yep, this is what it's looking like everyone. Once you put those basic ingredients in. Not a bad smell too, really nice and tasty. Can't wait to serve this with the beef. I suppose I, suppose I should get the uh, pot ready for pasta here. Yep, I'm doing pasta, but there is gonna be a different kind of pasta to use. Okay, so then once you bring this to about a simmer, that's when you can cut the heat to about medium low, and then you let it sit for about three to five minutes before you put the beef back in. And in case you're wondering what kind of noodles I'm gonna be doing, like I said, it's a different kind. Instead of my usual, well, run-of-the-mill spaghetti, about I haven't made egg noodles for myself in so many years. So I got some extra broad egg noodles I'm gonna serve this over. It's gonna be super, super, super tasty. Not bad at all. Kinda of stoked to try this out now. And my big thing too, I'm still hoping that cow is gonna be chewable for me. I don't feel like growling like a dog on camera for everyone's amusement. If I can avoid that, at best I'll try to avoid it. Mm. I think we're on the home stretch for this sauce because you need to keep the stir for three to five minutes until it's around the same consistency of pouring cream. So if it pours like this, it takes its sweet time, so that's a good sign that it's ready. So next, I'm going to be adding the rest of the beef back into this with the juices intact, and then I'll let it simmer too. So any of the ones that were pink in here are probably going to be cooking up and then stewing in these juices too. So that will get the job done. And then by the time this is ready, I'll still have a lot of time that the rest of my pasta is going to be set to go. Damn. Let's hope this thing is really tasty for me. Egg are all set to go, so let's cut the heat, turn off this bloody timer so it doesn't keep uh, yelling at me like an annoying child, and then drain all this stuff. There we are. And only a few remnants on the bottom, not the end of the world. So, 
I got my noodles here. This has been cut to the heat for a little while, but still had enough time to cook in case there's any pink meat still in there. So I'm just going to serve myself a healthy amount of egg noodles. And then, well, let's give myself a few extra helpings because I'm hungry. The supper got delayed a little later than I expected to. So, egg noodles here. Let me uh, be my own cameraman again, too. Okay, much better. Now let's administer the beef, the mushrooms, the onion, and the sauce. There, you're getting a good view of how this is looking. It's looking really, really tasty. Uh, yep, seems healthy enough. Great, so I've got my stroganoff here, and I've got my double smash IPA. Huh, it's not a, a total TKO, but I still don't feel like I've been hit by a sledge brother at the same time, so I guess it's good to go. So here we are, everyone. Um, hang on, I'm trying to get my title card into gear. Ah, oh, yeah, there. So let's give this a taste test. There is my meal. Let's get it closer to here and see what this is like. All right, so cow, don't make me bark like a dog. Hmm. Okay, blade roast is a bit chewy, I'm gonna admit that. But I mean, the flavor in this is so plentiful, I'm not even caring about that, truthfully. Let's try it with some egg noodle. Okay, this is pretty good. Yeah, I knew about stroganoff, like I said, but I know my mom used to make it sometimes. Or sometimes I also remembered it in, like, you know, those hamburger helper kind of uh, dishes that you just add the beef into it and then they give you the rest of the package there. Hmm. So yeah, color me impressed. Sour cream in a sauce is actually pretty tasty. And I'm going to say full disclosure, this isn't the beer talking, this is legit tasty. Man, one day I hope I can make this for my mom. Ah. So pretty satisfactory cooking adventure today that I just made up on the spot. Good brew, plenty of cheesy jokes, especially plenty of references to that fucking sledgehammer I keep hanging around, but it's all good. So everyone, this has been another cheesy edition of the Wander Nuki Cheese Cafe. So thanks for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, leave a comment, leave a like, and keep spreading the cheese everywhere you go. See y'all later and Hopefully I get to see you uh, shortly with a new project.